debugging and error handling. Um, in this uh, video, we'll talk about uh, precedence constraint, and so you will learn about how to use precedence constraint in Control Pro. This is one of the SSI's 2012 integration services tutorial videos from Radicat website. I'm Rila Rad, SQL Server MVP author and trainer. Precedence constraints are the way to prioritize and uh, put the order of execution for executables in the control flow. Uh, if there be no con no precedence constraint or connection, precedence constraint are uh, um, red or green arrows between uh, the executables like tasks like uh, containers. So if there was there is no uh, precedence constraint between two, ta two tasks, they will be run uh, in parallel. So we use that precedence constraint to define the order of execution. Uh, pre uh, and those um, precedence constraint can be combined uh, with some expressions as well. So precedence constraint is a combination of a constraint, which can be failure, success, or completion, or um, and end with the expression. So we can say that, for example, if that execute uh, SQL task failed, uh, then do this error log, execute this error log. If it, uh, it was successful, do this script task. For example, we can create another precedence constraint and say that if it was successful, but that expression, for example, variable x was greater than 10, then do something else. So we can use combination with expression to uh, make this more powerful. And there is also AND and OR functionality to uh, put on multiple tasks. For example, this error log might be an error log for not just this execute SQL task, but uh, some other tasks as well. So we want this to be run uh, when any of those tasks fails. Uh, we, so we should actually can use or condition or if we want uh, this to be run if all of those uh, fail then we use and I'll show you during the uh, sample we can use expressions as well to create if then kind of structure in the package and in the control flow which is quite useful I'll show you a sample of that uh, there is also some kind of error configuration in the control flow. Uh, there are three main uh, properties for the error configuration in the control flow. The first one is maximum error count, which is an integer value. Uh, we can set or get this value, which is maximum number of errors that can occur um, at the time of uh, uh, running the package. So if, uh, for example, we expect five error, we expect around 10 error to run, and we deal with that, then uh, we set that maximum error count to something like five, 10, something like that. Fail package on failure and fail parents on failure, these are quite um, uh, obvious uh, what they are doing. Fail package on failure will cause failure of package and failure of uh, the executable. Fail parent on failure will cause the parent container of a task to fail when the child container or an executable fails. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me show you a demo of precedence constraint. This is a very simple SSIS package which has a, an execute SQL task. This execute SQL task has a um, very simple command which is insert into the customer table. So we are inserting a customer key into that customer table. This is just as simple as that. And we actually get failure on this task. If I execute this, you can see this fails. Uh, we can um, figure out the reason why this is failed, which is um, because uh, there's a duplicate key. This key already exists there. If you uh, 
uh, study previous video that was talk about execution result and how to troubleshoot that. In this video, we are going to talk about prisoner's constraint. So I want to catch this failure and do a log task. So what I do here is to open SSIS toolbox and I put another execute SQL task here. I name this as error log and I connect. This is the precedence constraint, this green arrow. So when I connect it here, the green means success. So this means that on success of this uh, first task, the second task will run, but I don't want to be run on the success. So I right click on this and I say uh, on failure. I want this to be on failure and you see that this changed to red. I can also choose completion. Completion means if it uh, completed, even failure or success. For this sample, I choose failure. And in the error log, I can log something into the database. For example, here I say that insert into error log. There's a error log table which has package name date, time, and error message columns and I get values, package name, I can use a system variable for the package name I can use get date function, SQL function to get the current date and time and er an error message, I can say that error occurred error happened in execute SQL task or let's say in insertion of record into customer table. So as you can see I used a, a, a small parameter marker here which is a question mark I want to use that uh, I want to pass the system variable here so I just go to the parameter mapping and I add the variable that has the package name there is a package name system variable and I set this as an input and the data type is var char. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to pass parameters, have a look on Execute SQL Task tutorial video. Okay, so this is error log. So I want this, if this caused failure, go to the error log. Otherwise, for example, if it was succeeded, go to an script task. So I connect the precedence constraint, the green one, which is successful. So this means that if this task was successful, the script task will run. Otherwise, the error log will happen. So I start execution of this. Uh, at this time our error log also caused failure, so I had to investigate what caused this failure. Okay, that was this entered into parameter name unrecognized. Okay, in the parameter mapping, I should use zero as parameter names because I'm using OLEDB connections. For OLEDB connections, can, uh, parameter names start with zero. As you can see, uh, uh, the first task, which is insert customer record, fails, and we catch that failure, and uh, as a result, the error log happens. And then if I have a look on uh, my error log table, it says that package 2, which is name of our package, package 2 failed. And this is the error message that we uh, entered, and this is the date time of the error. Uh, so as you can see, we can use a precedence constraint to get this kind of error message. We can even use precedence constraint to create if-then-else conditions and that sort of uh, structure. Let's create
create a new package, new exercise package. In this exercise package, I want to first check if that record exists or not. I know that there are different ways to do that, for example, doing this with tsql, but in this example I just want to show you how to do if uh, structure within the uh, exercise package with uh, precedence constraint and expression. I create a variable here, I name this as if exists. I just leave the data type as int and I rename this SQL task, execute SQL task to um, check record existence. I just copy this statement and I'm going back here. I create a connection to same database and I just check instead of insert into, I select count star as cnt from this table where customer key where customer key is equal to this value. So this is the statement that I, that I use. If this CNT returns as zero, this means that this record does not exist. If this returns with one or higher, this means that this record exists and we should not insert that. So I want to get the result of this, put that into if exist variable. So I change the result set to single row. I'm going to the result set tab and I add the result set record here. I name CNT and the result go into if exists. So right now, after doing this, I want to do that insertion. So I just copy this from that package and I paste it here. So I connect precedence constraint and I right click on this, I edit. As you can see, this is precedence constraint uh, editor, and it says that evaluation operation at the moment is constraint. And this means that if the first task was uh, uh, the constraint of first task was successful, then the second task will run. But we don't want that. We don't. We want this to be successful and an expression to check the value of if exist variable. So I say that expression and constraint. I set value of constraint as success and I say expression to be zero. So if exist be zero, which is count of those records. If there is no record like that, then this to be zero. So as you can see, there is a small fx here, which shows that this uh, precedence constraint, constraint contains an expression as well. And I want to put the error like here as well. So I copy error like here and I connect this to this one. Again, this time I choose precedence constraint to be success. I do not go with the failure because uh, if it, it was, I want to put something to say the record exists. So if it was successful and the uh, if exist was greater than zero, then this means that the record exists. So I use that and instead of error log, I say that record exists log. And I change this a little bit. I change this instead of error happened. I say that customer record exists. I also want to uh, error the log itself because there might be an error happening here somewhere that cause failure rather than just uh, primary key violation. So I just copy error log again here. I paste that here. And this time I just use the constraint which is failure. So 
I just add some annotations to make it more um, obvious. So I just say that if not exists, so if the record not exists, do this. Add another annotation here if exists. Do this, and if it was failure, do this one. Okay, so uh, before executing that, I just truncate the like table. So there's nothing at the like table at the moment. When I execute this, as you can see, the first uh, uh, task happened and count the number of records because that count number of records was greater than zero. Then the second tasks happened, no error happened actually. So with this if structure, we actually get rid of that error. And here in the error log, actually it should, shouldn't be error log because it's not any error anymore, but uh, you get what I mean. This is just for the sample. So this says that package number three, package three, the error message or the log message is customer record exist and this was that time. If the record was not exist, this will go through that way. But let's say if, how this might fail. For example, let's say the customer table name changed to customer underscore or something like that. So when I execute this again, this first task failed and that failure actually caused error lag to rise and this time we seeing that the error message is different because this time this task actually runs. So that this kind of situation actually shows um, how to use expressions and constraints combination of these two to do some kind of lagging in uh, control flow tasks. Uh, there is a problem with this way and that is that we do not get the exact error message detailed error message and error code in this way so we should uh, get use uh, we should use some kind of event handlers which i will talk about in the next video to show to get the detailed error message out of that but this way it still is quite uh, useful especially with this if condition applies there is also another thing about the prisoner's constraint and that is the um, the uh, as you can see here in the edit button the multiple constraint uh, can assume that we have another script task here which is doing something else let's say for example it's sending mail so we have a sending mail task we have an insert customer record if any of these fails, I want the error log to happen. And I would put the proper error message there as well. So I choose that one as a failure. In this way, that error log would uh, only happen if both of these tasks fail. For example, if this task fail, but this task succeed, this never execute. So, uh, but in this case, I want this to execute if both, if any of these fails. So I just right click on any of these prisoners constraint and I go to edit option. And here I choose logical or. The default is logical and. And as you can see, these lines are both solid, which means it's logical and. If I choose logical or, you can see that these lines change. So this means this is logical or. So this means that if any of these tasks fail, the second the destination task will actually execute. So this is quite useful when you are working with multiple tasks. So that was the sample of uh, uh, or prisoner's constraint. In summary, we've talked about prisoner's constraint, how to use constraint like success, failure, completion. We've talked about expressions, which is quite useful to create kind of if conditions with combination of prisoner's constraint. And you've seen how to uh, use that and or operations for multiple executables. And we've also talked about error configuration in control flow.